Hey everyone, this is Push the Lane. I'm James Rauman here, joined by a man. Some say his odor is so masculine that it pollinates flowers across the countryside. Nick Allen! I don't even know where I was going I, with I didn't that, really but... expect that. I expected a really, really lame joke, and now I'm just confused. And then it was awesome. I'm so confused. But we have an awesome show today. Uh, we're going to be covering some cool stuff. But the first thing, EU LCS qualifier. It's pretty exciting. Some awesome teams. A lot of stories. What was your favorite? Uh, well, it, it was very exciting. I think it was kind of a shock. My favorite story was the fact that Fnatic actually did make it out. Um, <laughs> I was very surprised that Millennium, you know, didn't make it. I, they looked really sloppy. I think that was the truth of a lot of the teams uh, in the entire EU qualifier. A lot of the games that I saw, they were decided by team fights. The, yeah. the games were just very even er, uh, early on. There wasn't a lot of great jungle invasion or anything like that. And Millennium, uh, Old Eclipsia, that was something that they were known for. They were known for that really strong invasion and what they could do along those lines. And it just, it didn't, we didn't see it. They didn't have those jungling timings. There wasn't a lot of synergy between I'm So Fresh and Tabs. Shalaya, on the other hand, looked dominant with against all authority. He looked very strong. So you have to imagine that Millennium's kind of wishing they had Shalaya on their team. But um, all the teams, I'm not sure that I think they can compete with some of these top international teams. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it felt a lot of like the North American qualifier to me. A lot of the teams that I didn't expect to make it out made it out. And it wasn't as clear cut as a lot of people thought it was going to be. Uh, for me, I thought Fnatic was definitely a shoe in but they barely scraped by in the situation. They didn't play up to their ability. Um, we saw that really awesome play coming out of uh, XPK. Is that who it was yes. in the SK game? So we saw that. Um, but other than that, it was they were kind of lackluster. It wasn't the same team that we saw at IPL5. And uh, I, I would have liked to see a better performance out of them. And then LOL Pro, oh my gosh, they're I out. They didn't make it. Nick, I mean, are they going to disband? I, I have to imagine. I think they probably will. I don't know. if we heard, St. Vicious said if that the North American team didn't make it into the LCS, that they were going to disband. I can assume that that's the same deal for LOL Pro, um, which sucks because Maluno is a great player. Extinct is great, too. They had Schlepper on the team. Um, it, it's sad for them, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him break Lull up. Pro almost disbanded before the tournament, it seems. I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that they were talking about it, but they dropped down to two members right before the uh, the championship series and qualifiers, and they actually had to pick up Slepper again in order to actually even qualify uh, yeah. and be considered the same team. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering what's going to happen with a couple of these uh, you know teams that were left behind, Millennium in particular, since they did have a good opportunity. But that brings us into our next topic, guys. So what's going to be happening in Season 3 on the EU scene? Who do we think are the top contenders. I know I have my picks, Nick. We can start with yours. Yeah, I mean, the Good Game University. Uh, I'm sorry, Good Game University. Gambit, Gambit Gaming, Gaming. Jimmy. Uh, Gambit Gaming is still really strong. They they're showed dominant. they can beat Korea, which I didn't think was possible at this point. So they're really good. Uh, we haven't seen that much from Team EG yet. I don't really know if they've been scrimming a lot, if they've been playing really at all. A lot going on for them as a team. So, But I can I can bet they're going to be pretty dominant as well. Um, and then SK is always a grab bag. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get with them. They look good at the... Uh, um, at the IEM Katowice recently, so they, they've been playing well. Um, we'll see how they do in the next season. And then we have these five other teams now. Uh, Fnatic, of course, I mean, they didn't perform well, but they'll do well in this tournament. Um, but some of the big ones, Dragonborn and... Um, I'm trying to think who else is there. But Against in, in All the, Authority, yeah. Giants yeah, 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 that, uh, was that a big vein, shocker. Um, I'm, I'm worried that they're going to fall really far mm -hmm. behind, and they're not going to be able to compete with these top teams. And that's actually the same thing I'm worried about for the North American scene. Um, and I think we're going to see that... Uh, as well, an issue with the EU2. There's no question, Gambit Gaming, number one, they are the most dominant team in the EU scene. Maybe um, the world. Uh, yeah, maybe the world. I don't know. Uh, Alex Ish is very strong in the mid lane, and he combos very well with Diamond. Um, so they're you know definitely really strong together. They put a lot of pressure on opposing teams early on in the game. And then their uh, late game team fighting is amongst the best uh, of any team. So they are clearly impressive. Evil Geniuses, Probably in that number two slot. I actually would say that I think Fnatic has the talent to be that number two because yeah. um, I think that Xpk and so as are a little bit more aggressive than Froggen and Wicked are. Uh, the talent level on Evil Geniuses, though, it's it's definitely there. And if they can, you know, figure out um, where they can play maybe a more aggressive early game, or if they can pull it into that late game, uh, they can always make some things happen. But besides those three teams, I actually think there's a big drop off. I think the rest of the yeah. EU teams are going to struggle. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what we, you know, how they develop. But right now, I think that they just pale in comparison uh, with those top three EU teams. And I think Fnatic will respond after this uh, weekend. Soaz and XPK are just way too strong and talented for them to not be a dominant team. 
Yeah, I think it was just probably a bad tournament for them. So we'll see how they develop. Uh, next, the CLG Premier Series is our next topic. It's been going on. It's a qualifier into IPL 6, yeah. which is pretty cool stuff. A lot of strong amateur teams, Dirt Nap Gaming. Um, also some big stories in this tournament, especially out of Gigi's team. So what's going on with that? Well, guys, if you haven't been watching this entire tournament, the CLG Premier Series, well, too bad. There's no VODs. Uh, that's kind of a shame, but it's actually a very impressive production values other than that. Wellplayed.org, I was fortunate enough to cast their Rampage series almost two years ago, and it was, at the time, probably the best online tournament. And this, the production values are definitely there still. It's a very impressive tournament, but there's not a lot of views. Only one, 2,000 viewers. It is and still on own TV. It is on own TV, but there are some people the watching right own still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some so, someone out there. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, what's going to happen with the amateur scene if this is what we're getting? Getting for the tournaments. But uh, that aside, there are some really exciting things to look forward to. Like you had mentioned, GG's team, uh, Azur Cats, they are potentially one of these teams that season three amateur scene, they could just dominate, and Curse Academy as well. Those two teams in particular look like they could just be absolutely smashing everyone else in the uh, upcoming season three. Curse Academy has Pobelter, they have Rux, and they have I Will Dominate, and Altex looked really strong as AD, whereas Gigi's team has old Cloud9, the two best players from Cloud9, Niantonso and Yuzuki, and that's just a recipe for success right there. That being said, I don't think that they are going to win this qualifier. I see it going to Dirt Nap Gaming. They are the most sound team right now. I thought they should have made it in through the Season 3 e, uh, North American qualifiers, and I think they're going to easily clean up the competition right here. I think Dirt Nap Gaming is the easy choice in this situation. They're well, Crawley's are, looking a lot stronger Crawley than he used is to. incredible, and he he's looked really, really good at Kha'Zix mid. Yeah, and he's really embracing a lot of that bruiser, like, 80 spellcaster yes. meta that's going on the mid, and he's really flourishing as a result. Um, they are 2-0 in their group, but I think the one to look out for is FX Open Esports. And but based, why, Nick? They, because I, I, heard I haven't a, seen anything about him to make <laughs> me think this. I heard a little rumor that uh, oh. West Rice and Salsi are going to be joining up with this team, who's already looking strong. They have... Um, well, they had Bishu. I don't know where he's going to go. Yeah. And the X-Hazard, I think, is also off the team. But th they're already looking strong. They have, like, 12 guys on their roster. <laughs> yeah. so The Wikipedia page is very misleading. But now they're getting two more very experienced guys to kind of help them and coach them in this kind of amateur environment. So I think with that, they can flourish. They can do really well. So I would look to FX Open to make big plays in the CLG, CLG Premier Series. I, that would be really cool. I think they're another team that we have to consider then going forward with all these uh, new additions. I really don't see them winning this, though. I would be very surprised if they win this qualifier uh, just because they haven't had that coordination. That's been some of their issues in the past. And West Rice sometimes does look like he's going to struggle top lane, and I, I don't see them beating any of the other teams. But we'll see. Yeah, we exciting. saw him struggle at the uh, LCS qualifier, so I'm sure that could probably carry over into this tournament as well. Um, this weekend, next topic, Sao Paulo is coming up. Um, a lot of teams have sadly dropped out of yeah. this tournament, which has left it pretty Brazil heavy at the moment. Well, let's well, let's look at what the tournament structure yeah. used to be because it used to be a really cool, exciting international tournament. So, what were some of the teams that so have actually dropped out? CLG NA. Yeah, uh, I guess I can't really say that anymore. CLG. Um, Curse dropped out, and Fnatic also yeah. have dropped out. So, three of the best teams in the world all dropped out of this tournament. Yeah. And I think a lot of that probably has to do with scheduling right. because there's been so many Fnatic tournaments back-to-back. -back. LCS, within. EU, and NA start next week. So there's a lot riding on these first games. And I, I can see why they would cancel. Right. Well, Fnatic was in up until this past weekend when they qualified for Season 3. And then, you know, like you said, they just don't have enough time on their schedule. So the question is, Nick, is this something that, you know, the players need to be more responsible for, or, uh, you know, in scheduling and whatnot? Or is it just unfortunate timing on the part of IEM Sao Paulo? Well, I could see Fnatic wanting to sort of leverage their, their tournaments. You know, yeah. if they lose in LCS, it's like, well, at least we got IEM coming up. Sao Paulo, we can at least recover right. a little bit, hopefully win, get some money, you know, offset the costs. Um, but I think really mainly it's just unfortunate timing. Yeah. I think IEM wants to run these tournaments, and, you know, they have such event management is you have small windows to schedule tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to have it either on this weekend or these, this weekend. So if, if, that's the, if that's the result, then you just kind of stick it in where you can, and then so much ends up filling in on top of that. And that's why we're seeing four tournament weekends in a row. And then moving into the LCS, so now, I mean, tournaments every weekend. So really... It's just too much. I think it's unfortunate timing. Yeah, it really is. I 100% agree. 
um, you can't expect the teams, uh, you know, in these situations. You have to uh, support them in any way possible and make sure that they have a nice, easy route. But we'll see what's going to go on. I actually, for at least picks, I think that Meet Your Makers is going to dominate this tournament. Um, they look very strong in the EU qualifiers. Millennium, Heidel leaving the team. They're seeing a lot of issues there. Tabs, not really on top with I'm So Fresh. He's been playing some interesting things like Fizz, and it does look strong at times. Angus, not really a playmaker. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with them. But I, I think Meet Your Makers is clearly the favorites. It would be really cool to see one of these Brazilian teams surprise us all, oh though, and then come out on top. That would be amazing. That's like that's my big hope for this yeah. tournament. I, I hope the Brazil scene is really advancing lately. Um, when we saw them, when we tried running some stuff a while back, or I, I watched in some yeah, qualifiers, I didn't think they were they doing do that great. They do a little great, bit, but they're but always out pretty early. Yeah, they're out pretty early. They don't do that well, but I mean, the scene is definitely there. They're getting a lot of spectators uh, for these tournaments. They're doing really well, um, and, and the games are still exciting. So I really hope a Brazil team comes out on top, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Korean scene is just too strong. Um, LGIM isn't known as one of the best teams in Korea, but I am riding on the fact that Korea is the strongest region, and that's enough to get LGIM into first place. All right, place. betting on the strength of the scene, that's yeah. fine, and it brings us into our last topic, guys. Yep. So OGN Finals, it's the final countdown. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. I, I know you were, because I, okay. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on, OGN Finals, Najin Sword versus, uh, that was really awkward, Azubu Frost. <laughs> um, who are your picks, uh, Nick? Um, I think you know what mine yeah, is. Yeah, I know your, yours is Najin Sword. But uh, I think mine's Najin Sword as well. But I'm just using the logical path. Of course, Mac Noon is amazing. But if you look at the past, the semifinals and how that worked out, you know, Azubu Frost and Azubu Blaze were close in both of their semifinal mm -hmm. matches. Uh, Najin Sword versus uh, KT Rolster B, it was not close. Najin Sword just dominated them. And then KT Bolt Rolster B went on to 3-0 Azubu Blaze in the third place match. So with that process, you can see how much stronger of a team Najin Sword is than Azubu Frost. So I think they're not going to be able to stop Mac Noon. They're going to, if it goes to the fifth game, which I mean, hopefully it will. Najin they're going to give. Doesn't lose game five. Yeah, they don't lose. Well, if you just give Mac Noon whatever champion he, he wants, he gets Kazix. It's over. It's over. I mean, if, but you could say that about like five or six right. champions yeah. for him, which is the incredible part about. Uh, about him as a player, but I think Najin Sword is going to easily take this thing. I'm going to say 3-1. Well, top and mid are probably the most dominant positions in the game right now, um, just with the way the game is balanced. And Mac Noon is probably the best top laner in the world. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting battle, Mac Noon versus Shy. I think what's going to factor into it also is going to be um, what happens in some of the other lanes. Song has been incredible for Najin Sword. Uh, he looks very strong in the bot lane. But in particular, I'm looking at, or in the mid lane, I'm in, in particular, I'm looking at the bot lane, though. And Woong, he's been a very offensive-minded AD carry in the mm -hmm. past, but he gets caught out sometimes. And against a really strong assassin, like uh, Mac Noon in those team fights, that could maybe get him in trouble. But if Lust Boy is strong enough, uh, Lust Boy is definitely top tier support, you know, his Lulu and whatnot. Uh, he could maybe make something happen in the bot lane. That being said, I, I do agree. It's going to be decided by Mac Noon. And game number five, I don't see Nosh and Sword losing that blind pick. I agree it's going to be a 3 2 win. Should be very exciting. Make sure you guys check that out. That'll be fun. I think that's Friday evening. For, yeah, it is. Um, it's or this the Friday. Friday or Saturday morning for for some of you. So make sure you check that out. Should be very exciting. But that's it for this week, guys. This has been Push the Lane. Uh, add us on Twitter. Let us know what you want us to talk about. I'm at Nick Allen IGN. At BaronCast. Uh, we definitely would like to hear back from you guys. Any thoughts this upcoming week? It is going to be the start of Season 3 Championships. We're actually going to try a little bit of a new format. Yeah. We're going to be making picks all season long, and then we're going to be recording the picks. So at the end of the season, I can go back and tell Nick how wrong he was and how many of those picks I was able to get. That's my goal, at least. That's the There'll hope. be a scoreboard of, you know, you can't, right. you can't lie anymore, James. You won't be able to hide your, your losses. But it uh, should be really fun. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, once again, this has been Push the Lane. And tune back next week. We'll have some more of that stuff for you. And the LCS Championship Series starting.